A cordial greeting? Today is Monday, May 27, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In today's video, I would like to talk about the first tropical wave of this season, which is currently located just north of Venezuela and south of the Dominican Republic. This tropical wave will be moving westward over the next few days, and some models show that it could amplify in the waters of the western Caribbean Sea and just east of Nicaragua. This first tropical wave was quite active yesterday as it crossed the Lesser Antilles and headed south of Puerto Rico. It is anticipated that by the end of this week, it will be interacting with a low-pressure system that will be located north of Costa Rica and Panama. I wanted to give you an update because some models show the possibility of developing a low-pressure system that could bring significant rain events for Haiti, the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico in the long term during the next week. We will also talk about whether there are chances of cyclonic development over the next seven days. I also wanted to mention that the National Hurricane Center has marked the second tropical wave of this season. However, the conditions will not be favorable for cyclonic organization as it moves towards the Caribbean region. Remember that early in the season, the region between the Caribbean and Africa is usually not favorable for cyclonic formation. However, during June, we observe the Western Caribbean Sea and the waters of the Gulf of Mexico, where some tropical cyclones have historically developed. Before continuing, I wanted to remind you that next Saturday officially marks the beginning of the 2024 hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin. Here at Hurricane Info, I will be attentive to bringing you information about any cyclone that forms in the Atlantic and the Pacific. But it is very important that you check if you are subscribed to the Hurricane Info channel. Go to the bottom of the video, click on the red button that says subscribe, and then click on the bell so that you receive notifications when I record new videos. This is very important for you to stay informed during the hurricane season. Let's talk a bit about the Western Caribbean region, which we will be observing particularly towards the end of this week. If we zoom in on the infrared satellite image, here you can see the tropical wave moving through the Caribbean, and we also have an area of bad weather located just northwest of Colombia and near Panama. This tropical wave is projected to continue its westward movement, and will eventually be located south of Jamaica and east of Nicaragua, interacting with an area of bad weather and possibly a low-pressure system emerging from the Colombia region. It is here, in about five days, where we will be monitoring the interaction of the tropical wave with this possible low-pressure system. Additionally, part of this bad weather will cross into the eastern Pacific waters, where we will also be monitoring any disturbance that has potential for cyclonic development. In fact, these are the areas that NOAA and its Climate Prediction Center have marked as the zones we will be monitoring for early June. It is important to mention that the chances of development in this area over the next 7 to 10 days are quite low. Even so, remember that sea surface temperatures remain very hot in the Caribbean region. We are at record levels for this date, specifically in the Caribbean region and the area we will be monitoring over the next few days. However, atmospheric conditions in the Atlantic are still not optimal for cyclone development and formation. You can see that currently these red colors are located over the Atlantic and represent a phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation that is not favorable for cyclonic formation. It won't be until mid-June when conditions can start to significantly improve for cyclonic development. For now, there is no concern in the Caribbean and the Atlantic. Historically, during the first 10 days of June, the areas where we have seen cyclonic developments focus just east of the Yucatan Peninsula and in the waters of the Gulf of Mexico. You can see that in the region south of Jamaica and east of Nicaragua, it is not typical to see the formation of tropical cyclones so early in the season. Even so, we have the GFS model that in recent days has been showing the possibility of developing a low-pressure system in this area. Let's look at the most recent run from this morning, May 27th, and you can see that during mid and late this week, the GFS model does develop a low-pressure system just east of Nicaragua, particularly between Wednesday and Thursday. This low-pressure system developed by the GFS model is associated with this area of bad weather located over Colombia and will move westward. But it is important for you to know that the GFS model has a bias for developing tropical cyclones early in the season, and almost always, this development does not happen. But sometimes, the GFS model is also the first to project the development of cyclones that have formed in this region. What I want to say is that the GFS model usually develops ghost systems early in the hurricane season in this region, but sometimes it is the first to see development. Eventually, by the weekend and early next week, the GFS model develops another low-pressure system southeast of Jamaica and south of Haiti. This would be for next Sunday, where this low-pressure system will be interacting with an upper-level trough and could again bring a significant rain event for Haiti, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic. But in the last run, the GFS model does not show the development of a tropical depression. Even so, some members of the GFS Ensemble are developing a low-pressure system in about 6-7 to seven days south-southwest of the island of Jamaica. This represents between 15-25% to 25 of the GFS Ensemble members, and the majority of them have a rather weak low pressure, with a trajectory moving northeast near or over Jamaica, eastern Cuba, 
Haiti, and the southern Bahamas. Also, see that other members have the development of a low-pressure system south of Guatemala and Chiapas in Mexico, moving northwest. However, few members develop a tropical depression in the eastern Pacific region. In contrast, we have the European Ensemble, where none of them show development in the Caribbean region, although some do in the eastern Pacific region. This would be for next weekend. If we look at the cyclonic development probabilities according to the European Ensemble, there is only between a 20-25% to chance of development in the Caribbean region and east of Costa Rica and Nicaragua, and also between a 20-25% to chance south of Chiapas and Guatemala. Taking into consideration that the hurricane season has not yet begun, we are in a phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation that is not favorable for development, and the little support that exists among the global models, the chances of development in the Caribbean region or the Eastern Pacific remain very low for now. Even so, we will be monitoring this tropical wave as it moves in the waters of the Western Caribbean, and also the area of bad weather emerging from Colombia. Regardless of whether any development occurs in this area, I will remain attentive to the possible rain event that could develop early next week and impact the Greater Antilles. For example, let's look at the GFS model projection, which, starting next weekend, has a rain event that could move over the region of Haiti, the Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico, generating a new event of heavy rains with potential for flooding. However, this is a long-term projection, so we will have many days to observe how this forecast evolves. The important thing for now is that everything is calm, and there is no reason to be worried in the Caribbean, Central America, or Mexico. Well, with this, I say goodbye. I hope you have an excellent week. I will be attentive over the next few days in case it is necessary to record another video.